Hey guys, what's going on? Dan the Man coming at you from the 60s Rule channel. And today we got a cool video of some die cast that I've collected over the years. And I uh, can't wait to show it to you. So this video might be a little lengthy. So kick back, relax, get yourself a favorite beverage. And uh, we're going to revisit the 60s in this next episode of Retro Finds. So don't go anywhere and stick around. Hey guys, all right, what's going on, man? Back at the bench over here. And, uh, well, as uh, you guys well know, I like collecting um, die cast or anything related uh, basically to the 60s. And uh, the reason why I uh, selected these guys over here and started collecting them and restoring them, you know, a while ago is because, uh, you know, I have a connection to all of these uh, cars over here because uh, uh, when I was a kid back in the 60s, I used to watch all the TV shows and movies. You know, you got, you know, Batman, you got the Green Hornet and, uh, you know, James Bond movie. Uh, who doesn't like James Bond, right? And then uh, Man from Uncle used to watch that every Friday. And uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I started collecting these things about that and about 10, 15 years ago. And uh you know, some of them I got for good prices, and uh, some of them were, uh, well, you know, let's say they were out of reach because <laughs> they wanted some crazy money for them. But, uh, you know, uh, I got some uh, rebuilders, and I got some originals. So uh, let's start from left to right. We're going to start with this guy over here. Uh, the Batman, the Batmobile. And... Uh, this box is a, it's a reproduction box, but that doesn't bother me, you know, because, you know, some of these uh, original boxes, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, the money that they're asking for them are just like through the roof. So very nice box. Get them from a guy in the UK and uh, does a great job. You know, it's nice for display. And uh, the TV show ran from 1966 to 1968, starring Adam West as Batman and also a.k.a millionaire Bruce Wayne and his sidekick Burt Ward who played Robin and uh you know it was a fun little show back in the 60s you know and uh you know I couldn't wait till the show came on I'd be outside playing my mom said hey come on in Batman's on and we run home and watch uh you know some of the episodes it was really cool back in the day you know and uh the Batmobile, I believe, was built by George Barris, and it was a Lincoln Futura, and I, I think they paid like 225000 for this thing. It was a concept car, and, you know, it was the world's most famous car, you know? And, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's take a look at what I did to this guy over here. Oops. Put that down there. And uh, this actually is not the original. I think the original came out in... Um, 66 i believe uh i couldn't get my hands on a decent one that was from 1966 so what i did was this is a reissue this is from 1973 and then i went out and bought reproduction parts for the 1966 so i converted it into a 1966 uh, uh, uh version of this corgi uh batmobile so uh, I got reproduction figures in there. I don't know if, it, if that's going to focus or not. And then uh, I got the rocket tubes and the glass and the beacon on top was a reproduction part. Okay. And uh, I had to take this whole thing apart. And then you could tell on the bottom, I don't want the rockets to fall out. You can see it's got the uh, embossed uh, Batman silhouette on there. Uh, the original one didn't have that. It was just plain. And you can see I, I drilled all the uh, all the rivets were drilled out. And then I epoxied it back in, you know, just to make it look, you know, somewhat original. But, uh, you know, it's a reproduction, you know. And uh, it, uh, let me show you some of the features on here. This, this was kind of complicated. It's got the uh, chainsaw. See, that works. <laughs> Put your finger in front of it. See that? still works and uh when i was putting this back together the assembly it was kind of complicated so i had to take notes because 
there's a lot, a lot of mechanisms in here and then there's the uh there's the rockets in there and uh I don't know if I could uh if I turn this wheel they're going to go flying so they do it does work though and then there's a little there's a flame in the back there so uh, there's a cam on the shaft on the actual shaft if you turn the wheels you can see it it goes uh see the way it goes in and out so that's a pretty cool feature so when you run it fast you know on the floor it'll uh you know look like a flame you know simulated flame so uh you know what let me uh let me put this down just a little bit and i'm gonna see if i can fire the rockets for you <laughs> if i hope i don't lose them let's see if they'll work come on That's not cooperating. Anyway, I got to work on the mechanism. Oh, there goes one. <laughs> Let's see her fire another one. Oh, there it goes. Do you see that? <laughs> hey, they land on the floor this time. See, it comes with these, these little rockets right here. All right, guys. Uh, and uh, here's the box, the reproduction box. And what you do is you can fold this up. You fold this down and tight like that. And then you, what you do is you can slide it right into the box. But I keep them out like this for display. I got them in a glass case. So, so there's the Batmobile. And uh, here's a little advertisement I got. This is how Corgi advertised it. See, it's got the chainsaw blade over here, and you got the uh, triple rocket tubes. They fire one at a time. There's a little uh, step in there, so you keep turning the wheel, and they keep firing. And uh, let's see, Batman figure on the inside, yep. This is, like I said, this is a 73 version. Yeah, pretty cool stuff, man, pretty cool. Okay, next up, the Green Hornet. This is a popular show back in the day. It didn't very uh, last very long, only uh, two seasons. Uh, it was on from 1966 to 1960. Uh, where was it here? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One second, guys. It went, yeah, 1966 to 1967, starring Van Williams as the... Uh, Green Hornet, and of course, everybody knows Bruce Lee. Uh, he was the chauffeur, he played Cato, martial art expert. And uh, the car that they used for this, uh, for the stuntman, were actually it was a 1965 Chrysler Imperial Crown. And I believe they uh beefed this thing up with a Chevy, it was a nine, uh, 454 big block in here, so. It, uh, you know, it had some power, you know. <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, pretty cool car there. And uh, same thing, this is a reproduction box, right? And uh, inside, uh, they always have the secret instructions inside. Basically shows you, uh, the secret instructions uh, just shows you how to use the uh, features on the car. And th this is... Uh, not an original, but it is the reissue from 2001 because I couldn't get my hands on the original. Uh, maybe someday if I hit the lottery, who knows? <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, you open up this, uh, you hit this button in the front here, and a missile is supposed to fly out. But uh, it won't fly out. I have to work on it because the missile is a reproduction because this one didn't come with the missile. So I got to work on that. And uh uh, someday I'll get it to work. And then the uh, radar in the trunk. Let's see if this works and doesn't make a fool out of me. There it goes. See that? Flew right out. <laughs> hey, it worked on the first shot. So what you do is you just push it back in. It's spring-loaded. Right? And then you close the trunk and then you hit this lever here and it pops out. Just like in the TV series. And this one didn't come with the Green Hornet figure. Uh, I bought that separate. I took this apart and I drilled this hole out. There wasn't, wasn't a hole there. And there's a little tab underneath there that you're supposed to turn. See, it, uh, 
there's not much to grab it, but he fires back and forth. Let me see if I can focus. There you go. So you turn it like that, and he fires back and forth. So that's pretty cool. And um, this is the only advertisement I could find. This is how they advertised it back in the day, the Green Hornet. The Black Beauty Green Hornet's a crime-fighting car, 5 inches long, 127 millimeters in length. And uh, shows you all the features of the car. You got the firing missile, and you got the flying radar scanner in the back. So, pretty cool. Uh, next up is going to be this one here. This, this guy here, the uh, Aston Martin DB5 from the movie Goldfinger. Uh, this one is all original, and uh, I purchased it like that. It had some wear and tear, but I didn't care. But all the functions, there's three functions on here, and they all work. So that's pretty cool. And uh, what Corgi did back in the day, um, you're probably wondering why this is in gold. Well, the... Uh, marketing uh team decided to paint it in gold to go with the theme of the movie they thought maybe you know it would uh you know beef up sales and then they about three years later they reissued the db5 uh and they painted it in the actual silver because the car in the movie was silver and then the only addition to the reissue it had the uh tire slicers in the back over there that you saw in the movie and it had the uh, rotating license plate on this on the reissue that Corgi did, but this is this is all original here, and uh, you have the plate steel on the back. Let me see if I can get that to operate for you. See that pops right up, pretty cool, huh? Let's see if it'll do it again. Ready? There you go. That works. And you got the uh, machine guns in the front. See they work. Let's see if we can pop that off for you. Pretty cool, huh? Two machine guns. And the ejector does work. I got to put the guy in his seat first. Wait, hold on. Let me see if I can get him out of here. He's, uh... Come on, get out. He's kind of stuck. Come on, get out of there. There we go. Let's place him in the injector seat. Okay, this should work, guys. Hang on. Come on, work. There he goes. <laughs> he went flying somewhere. When you buy any of these originals, sometimes this guy was missing, probably ended up in mom's vacuum cleaner or behind the uh, cushions in the, in the sofa. A lot of times you buy these, this uh, guy over here is missing. And, uh, yeah, it works uh, pretty well. See? There's the ejector seat there, and there's James Bond in the driver's seat. A uh, little backstory to this. Um, in 1965, my parents took me and my sister to the World's Fair in uh, Queens, New York. And it was a very hot day. We were walking around all day. And some of the uh, exhibits, you had to stand in line for 45 minutes. But at the end of the day, we went past an exhibit. They had this car, because it was 1965, they had this car on display. The one-to-one -one car. And they had these promos. I don't know what size they were. I assume they were 124 scale. I wanted one so bad. And I was kicking and screaming and told my mom, I want that car. And she said, okay, I'll go back and uh, I'll see if they have any left. And then she comes back and she says, oh, sorry, Dan. He goes, they're all sold out. And I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> and you know what? My parents didn't have a lot of money at the time. Did, barely had enough money just to take us to the World's Fair. So, you know, I got over it. So anyway, I got this die cast over here. This is really cool. I love it. And I'm never going to restore it. I'm just going to leave the patina on it. Some kid had fun playing with this back in the day. So I'm going to leave that just the way it is. So that's the uh, James Bond DB5. And last but not least, we got Man From U.N.C.L.E. What a uh, 
Cool TV show was back in the day. Uh, actually, UNCLE stands for United Network Command for Law Enforcement. Okay, got that? <laughs> and uh, TV show ran from 1964 to 1968. Starred Robert Vaughn, one of my favorite actors, as Napoleon Solo. And David McCullen as Ilya Kuryakin. <laughs> what a cool name. And, um, yeah, really, really fun show back in the day. And um, this is all original. I didn't do anything to this. And uh, got some of these uh, discs that are supposed to go on top there. Don't know what purpose they served. I tried researching this. And uh, they go on the top over this periscope, okay? And uh, this one actually came in two colors. It came in this blue, okay? And it came in cream. So if you can find the cream colored one, uh, I would go after that one because uh, there are not too many of them out there. It's, it, you know, there's more of the blue ones than the cream ones. And also I found out after doing some research, you see these wheels, those wire spoke wheels? I actually saw there's only a, just a handful of these cars that have the moon discs that actually belong on the Green Hornet. Now, what probably happened is when they were putting these together at the factory, you know, they had a bunch of bins sitting next to them. You know, one bin had tires, one had, you know, rims in it. And someone, you know, probably put the wrong wheels on, on that car, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, how ironic is that? Some factory worker made a mistake and turned it into some collector's dream. So if you could find one of these with this on it, I would grab it, you know, if you happen to find it at a flea market or something. But, you know, if it's in a collector's hand, he probably wants crazy money for it. But, uh, yeah, this one doesn't have a lot of features in it, and I'm surprised, you know. This is the only one that doesn't fire anything, you know. But when you hit the... You know, you hit the top uh, periscope. See, they they pop out each side. Let me see if I can show that to you. See? Makes a gun firing sound. And uh, the windshield, uh, you can see it's got bullet holes in it. <laughs> and then uh, this is really not the first issue. It is original, but there's one that has uh, spotlights on it that are just cast. These are chromed. But... Still a nice piece, all original. It's got the original rivet in it, you know. Very, very cool, man. Very cool. And then, like I said, these are these are all original. Uh, uh, you know, these two guys are original here. All the boxes are reproduction, but they're very, very nice. They display very, very well. And uh, also, when I was a kid, I I told my parents for my tenth birthday, I want this gun, and they. Bought this for me on my 10th birthday, and uh, this was so cool, man. Every kid in my neighborhood, they wanted a spy gun, and we used to play manhunt. We had a wooded area next to the house, and we just played manhunt and army and whatever, and this was such a cool gun. You'd you'd put the periscope, the uh, silencer on it, and it had the butt stuck on it, and uh, it, was, it was so cool. We had fun, you know? We never got violent. And we were kids, and uh, we had a blast, you know. It was so cool, you know. And I think my friend up the street from me, he had the Ilya Kuryakin uh, gun. And, yeah, we had a blast. This was by Ideal, I think. So, uh, well, guys, uh, I know it's a lengthy video, so uh, I figured I'd show you this, uh, my collection here of die cast here. And, uh, you know, uh, Hopefully, uh, you know, I can pick up a few more in the near future, you know. We'll see how my finances hold out, you know, because I'm retired now. I'm in a fixed income. So, uh, anyway, uh, I guys, I, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it for you guys. And I, I like sharing, uh, you know, all my collectibles uh, with you guys. And uh, I want to thank, and I don't say it enough, and I should say it more often, I thank you, all my subscribers, my new subscribers. I mean, you guys are awesome. That's why I'm making these videos here. I mean, if nobody's watching, I wouldn't make videos. But, you know, I'm putting out content that everyone likes, you know. And I enjoy sharing all my videos with you guys. And uh, you guys make it happen. You guys are awesome, man. I thank every single one of you, you know. 
And, uh, yeah, more to come in the near future. So, you guys, uh, listen, have a great night. Um, take care. Be safe. And uh, keep on building.